So we see a lot of drone developers asking for the perfect 3D sensor to do everything. And I think it's not a good idea, and here's why. First, we have to understand what are your goals. Um, yes, a drone can do a lot with an IMU, with a compass, with a GPS. But to be fully autonomous, a drone would typically have to be able to measure the distance with uh, a surface, uh, with the ground, with a wall. Um, you may also need to detect objects uh, to avoid collisions, not to map them in 3D, just to detect them to avoid collisions. Then, uh, if you go a bit further, you may want to scan and map the environment in 3D, for example, uh, with a LiDAR, or reposition the drone inside a known volume. So, each sensor has a very specific goal, uh, and drones usually carry multiple sensors to solve different problems. So, do not try to pick one perfect sensor to do absolutely everything. A good way to start defining your needs regarding sensors is to understand what is needed for the flight stack, for collision avoidance or autonomous flight, and what is uh, useful for the payload stack. Let's study a few examples. First, the Typhoon H. Uh, it's a great drone using Intel Wilson's technology to detect obstacles in front of the drone. So the drone is supposed to fly uh, with a path uh, autonomously. When an obstacle is detected, uh, it can stop and do something usually under human supervision. Another example is if you try to uh, scan a mining site in 3D. So you would fly autonomously and you will have a payload that would not interact with the flight stack, that would map the environment uh, in 3D, or at least gather the data and you could do the 3D reconstruction later on the server. Another case is if you want to not only detect obstacles, but fly around objects uh, autonomously, uh, safely, usually under human supervision. And the last level of autonomy is when you have full 3D awareness of everything that is around you, so you can define your mission autonomously on the drone by a piece of software uh, for autonomous flight in an unknown environment. So typically, you would drop your drone inside the building, and the drone would be able to map the building, fly in the building, avoid collisions, build a map, know where it is, all of that safely. Another criteria to consider is uh, the speed and range. For example, do you need uh, 3D sensing for takeoff and landing, meaning that you need uh, probably short distance, uh, short speed? Or do you need a uh, long distance when you are cruising at high speed, high altitude? That's a different kind of sensor, probably. And what kind of uh, efficiency and what kind of risk uh, do you accept in your typical usage model? Uh, do you want something that is perfect or do you want something that is good enough? Is it a first level of sensing and later uh, you will have a, a better sensor uh, for short range anti collision? So, all of that too has to be defined uh, to pick the right sensor for your needs. So, there is not a single 3D sensor that does everything. Perfectly. So let's study the autonomous cars of today because uh, they are very interesting in terms of uh, sensor mix. First, you would have a GPS to know where you are in the country, uh, to know roughly on what road you are, uh, to uh, map your course. Then you would have a computer vision to see obstacles very far ahead. Then you would have probably a rotating laser called LiDAR. Uh, to scan the environment at medium range, very precisely. And then you would probably have uh, sonars all around your car to detect um, um, cars on the next line and to detect uh, imminent collisions. So all of that has to be integrated uh, to form a viable and powerful and safe solution. Each sensor is not reliable, but when you blend them together, they become really interesting and efficient. Now, let's try to see each uh, category of sensor in detail. First, positioning, and first, GPS. So you know GPS, that's the one you have in your phone. Uh, it's not very precise, between 1 and 3 meters. Uh, but there is something new called differential GPS, or RTK GPS. To summarize, you have a station on the ground uh, that is uh, gathering data about the GPS signal and sending this uh, information over the network uh, to your drone. The drone also has a GPS receiver and is uh, receiving the GPS signal. By merging 
the signal you receive from the drone with data from the station, uh, you can normalize the signal and have a much better precision, usually between two and three centimeters. And all of that is available off the shelf today. Uh, it's very cheap, very small, very light. So uh, if you are designing professional drone solutions, try to use AirTK GPS. This is really amazing. So if you are indoor, GPS is obviously not an option, and ultrawide band would be a typical replacement. So it's a time of flight system. Uh, it is not a signal strength system like Bluetooth Beacon. That's why it is quite precise. And you can expect roughly 10 cm precision even in very large buildings. Uh, there's two ways to deploy ultra wide bands. You can have a very simple tag and uh, you can have anchors on the walls. And anchors will be very uh, smart and all connected with an IP network and communicating. Or you could have uh, the opposite where the receiver that you have on the drone is very smart and all the anchors that you have on the walls are pretty dumb and uh, just emitting a signal. So as long as the anchor that is on the drone can see the uh, anchors on the wall, uh, triangulation can happen and you have your localization happening correctly. So all of that is a variation of uh, triangulation on radio technologies. But it's also possible uh, for drone to fly in a building and to see uh, in 3D the walls around the drone and to build a map as it flies and to reposition as it flies. So it's called simultaneous localization or mapping or SLAM. To do that, uh, you would probably need a 3D sensor like RealSense and for sure a, a camera. Uh, plus uh, inertial sensors. And all of that is mixed together and uh, to, to build a 3D model of the space around you. So uh, you may think it's a perfect solution because there is no infrastructure to deploy, no anchors, nothing, but uh, it is really hard uh, to make it work. It has to be tuned for your specific case. Uh, it is not really long range. And uh, so there's a lot of uh, complexities in the implementation of SLAM. Uh, but you can have fun with uh, two SLAM implementations. One is based on Intel RealSense technology, specifically the ZR300 camera plus uh, Intel uh, SLAM library. Or you can go with a ROS module that is doing SLAM uh, only with a camera. So the RealSense implementation is very robust because it's using IMU plus 3D sensing plus uh, color camera where the implementation that will document uh, with ROS is much simpler. So you have the choice. So if you think uh, you can't deploy a radio infrastructure like ultra wideband and SLAM is too complex for your case or too CPU intensive, you can uh, have some visual anchors because you, you can just print a barcode, stick it on the wall, it's very cheap. There's uh, different ways to achieve this kind of uh, positioning in 3D compared to visual anchors. One is to use uh, libraries uh, that are coming from um, the augmented reality world called VISP on AR Toolkit. And they are very robust, they've been highly optimized over the years. And uh, to summarize, they will give you a vector in 3D compared to the 3D uh, markers that you have on the wall. Another way to do it is uh, uh, slightly more complex is when instead of printing a barcode, you would give a 3D model of an object, let's say a chair or a can, and uh, the computer vision library would be able to detect this object, uh, position the model in space, and position the drone compared to this object. So it's kind of a middle ground between barcode that requires you to, to print barcodes and to put them on walls and uh, slam that would be very complex. So you can use uh, this set of libraries. I encourage you to try this on our toolkit. They are available uh, with C, uh, Python interfaces and also as ROS modules. On top of your global positioning system, whether it's GPS or ultra wideband or slam, you will probably need some simpler sensors to solve very specific part of the problem. For example, a very typical problem for drone is to know the distance with the ground, the height. And uh, you can do that with a sonar or you can do that with a laser. And uh, with Intel Aero, we documented uh, on the web, on the wiki, 
uh, how to use a uh, LiDAR light V3, that is a laser-based solution, to measure the distance to the ground up to um, roughly 20 meters. So it's a very uh, nice solution for professional drones. Then you may need a 3D sensor to scan the environment or to go collect collision or to be a, one part of your SLAM solution. But at Intel, we have a very good binocular solution that is uh, using two cameras that are working with a wavelength between infrared and laser uh, to rebuild a 3D image. And what is really interesting is that the binocular reconstruction is extremely CPU intensive and is done with a dedicated chip that is inside the camera. So you take this camera, you plug it to the, your computer, and what the camera is giving you is a def data directly already processed. It's not only giving you two images and letting you do the computation on your graphics card or your CPU, it's already done for you. That's very convenient. And this uh, RealSense camera uh, called Air 200 is already included in the Intel Aero Ready to Fly drone. So it's great, you can start coding because it's already part of the drone and uh, it's ready to code. If you want to go a bit further, we have a new generation of RealSense camera that is on the market now called a D400 something, for example, D430 or 35. And they're amazing. They can uh, scan up to 20 meters or more. They work outdoor very well. And they have a combination of uh, laser projection and uh, binocular technology. So excellent RealSense sensors. So with RealSense, we had a rectangular image of deaf information. For example, HD resolution of deaf information is mostly uh, rectangular. But sometimes you want to see 360 around the drone, not only in one direction. And to do that, you can either take several RealSense cameras and stick them together. That works really well. Or you can use LiDAR. And a LiDAR is a rotating laser that will see uh, 360 and usually with a narrow um, band of 15 degrees. A very typical brand is uh, called Velodyne, and you would typically plug that uh, over a USB uh, Ethernet adapter. And please note that the weight and the price are absolutely totally different. So uh, LiDARs on RealSense are targeting very different usage models. And uh, you may want to try uh, RealSense first, and if it doesn't work, then you can study different real sense uh, plug together. And if it's not enough, then you can see if you can uh, work with a LiDAR. So all the technologies that are emitting something are heavy, are expensive, require a lot of power. And sometimes doing a computer vision on the drone uh, to solve a problem is really efficient. So here we have an example of um, a DJI Spark drone using an Intel Movidius uh, chip. Uh, to perform computer vision tasks using neural networks on deep learning. So we'll document that on the wiki, and you see it is really, really interesting. The potential is uh, huge, and um, it takes a different mindset to develop software on knowledge for this kind of uh, uh, computer architecture, uh, deep learning, neural networks, but it's really interesting. So with Movidius, we covered how computer vision can help you uh, fly and fly more autonomously and safely. Uh, here is how computer vision can help you as a payload. For example, you can take hundreds of pictures of a building from different angles and send that to a server where it will be reconstructed as a 3D model. And typical software include Pix4D, FPV camera, drone deploy, a lot of very good solutions on the market today. Another way to use computer vision is uh, to improve the flight behavior, but to focus on very simple things. So we are not trying to detect uh, 3D objects or to detect people or hands like uh, the Movidius space drone. We are just trying to look at vectors of things moving in front of the camera to avoid uh, drifting or to control drifting. Uh, this is called optical flow. And uh, you would typically uh, connect a sensor like Pix for flow. On Intel Aero, we don't use Pix for flow. We use a downward facing camera with a little piece of software running on Linux and giving orders to the flight controller. So that's a totally different architecture. And that's how we, we make it work on um, Intel Aero today. 
Another branch of computer vision that is interesting for drone is augmented reality. So we are not trying to show something on a screen or glasses or helmet. We are just reusing software that was developed and optimized for augmented reality and we put it on drones and we use it differently. For example, if you give me uh, this cube with some uh, codes printed on all sides, I can uh, detect the cube, detect the code and have a 3D orientation compared to the cube. So let's imagine you have a few cubes uh, scattered all over your room, then the drone could uh, use them as visual anchors to have a very precise 3D positioning in space uh, just by looking at them. It's very powerful, uh, really optimized, so make use of it. As a conclusion, I hope you are convinced that there is no perfect sensor able to see everything uh, because each sensor has very specific features. And the way to solve your problem is to be clear about your goals regarding the flight stack and user payload, two very different set of requirements. And the answer will probably be a mix of several sensors. And you'll have to blend uh, fusion the data from several sensors uh, to have a working, reliable, safe solution.